Amelia, I guess, you know, the knee-jerk response is to say what went wrong with communications, but I, I guess th there is the possibility that not even corporate guidance can keep up with the, the, the swiftness of this decline. Yeah, I, I am curious about that. I think a lot of people see that, you know, when you have fears of recessions, ad budgets are the first thing to go. So it's surprising that the sort of ad-supported companies weren't a little more bearish this last time around because it's unpredictable. But you, you look out to Q4, that's when ad budgets are traditionally highest for the, the holidays. That stuff gets booked now. So that's the stuff that's going away now is your Q4 advertising spend. It's all on pause because I think none of the CPG companies, none of the big brand advertising companies know how things are going to go. If you're an automaker, you have no idea if you're going to have cars to sell. Why on earth are you spending ad dollars on them right now? So I think that stuff is just all in a huge wait and see period. It might come back. But I think if you are an ad supported business, you're really looking at, well, I don't know when those dollars are going to come in. I got to forecast for the worst case scenario. Right. And then internally, these companies uh, in Snap Space have to wrestle with how do you how do you manage staff? Right. How do you manage hiring? You've, we've seen a bit of a disparity between those who are actively laying off and those who are trying to stay uh, stable in their headcount. But that's that's very tough calculus, given everything you just said. Yeah, I thought the, the labor disruptions line in Spiegel's letter was really interesting because it didn't say where the labor disruptions were. Did he mean in China, which can't produce enough goods during shutdowns? Did he mean in Silicon Valley, where the labor market's as hot as it's ever been? Microsoft is doubling base pay to, to, to compensate for the drop in equity compensation. It's, uh, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what he means by labor disruptions there. But I think one of the challenges for all these companies right now is that the labor market for tech workers is still red hot. And because the, the market is down, they're having to make up for it in cash. So that's just a huge pressure on tech companies that really hasn't happened before. That because the market has just gone up and up, they've paid everybody in stocks, and now they have to pay everybody in cash. And I think that's going to be an interesting dynamic over the next few years. Yeah, I, I wonder about that because, again, Neil, what we're seeing this morning in the markets is not just about the uh, ad-supported companies. Square right, down, right now is down more than 8%. Um, and we can go on down the line looking at other high-growth companies that are down a bunch. You know, Tesla is down uh, quite a bit as well. NVIDIA down 5%. Look at some uh, semiconductor names. Qualcomm uh, is also uh, down. AMD down uh, four and a half. Qualcomm down four. So um, w what does this do to tech worker psychology, right? And what does this do to innovation at a time like this? I know that uh, The Verge covers that. But, you know, management expectations and employee expectations through this whole time, whether we're talking about compensation, whether we're talking about where you're working from, we've noticed this divergence over the past year or so. Yeah, I would say it's uh, my view is short term pessimism, long term optimism. Right. In the short term. These companies are disrupted. Are they going to be able to put out new products on the cadence they want to? Is every company that is currently downstream of advertising, Stripe is one of them, right? Payments. A lot of direct-to-consumer payments happen on Stripe. They're all downstream of advertising. So I think there's going to be a lot of short-term disruption. I think a lot of people are going to leave. Because if you're getting paid in cash and you have a lot of cash, it's a good time to leave and start something new. That is the case for my long-term optimism. This is when companies get founded. This is when those investments start to happen. This is when the people who've spent a long time at the big five mm. leave and start new companies and generate the new class of ideas. That's what we saw actually last time in 2008. Yeah. If you remember, Steve Jobs famously said, we are going to innovate through the downturn. And you saw an absolute explosion of tech innovation, new products. I hope, I'm hopeful that happens this time, but I also don't know yeah. how long this one's going to be.